Hi, Paul from Contemporary Synth here. In these tutorials, we look at the technical and artistic capabilities of the Roland Phantom O workstation. Today, it's all about Ableton Live Lite and how to connect this computer to that program and make it play a song and do what you want to do. I'm in an initial scene. I'm just going to get right down to it. There are three things you need to check in your menu before you get into the software. The first is in the system menu, all the way at the top, you need to make sure that your USB driver says vendor. If it says generic, then you need to switch it to vendor. You need to hit right and you need to turn the keyboard off. You can't do it in the same session. I learned that the hard way. The next thing you need to do is go all the way down to the bottom and make sure that you are in version 1.02. This is the second update, and both the 1.01 and 1.02 updates specifically addressed Ableton Live integration issues, so you need to have them both. If that does not say 1.02, go to the Roland site, go to Downloads, find the Phantom O, do the USB Kabuki dance, and upgrade your keyboard. Then the third thing you need to do is go to Sound, and this is the leap of faith. Right now, I can hear my keyboard, and if I turn Local Switch to Off, I cannot. And what that is doing is separating the MIDI controller from the synthesizer. And what you can see in my keys, I'm still generating MIDI signals, but it's not going to the synthesizer because I'm relying on the program to do that. Um, this is scary because if you don't get the computer to work, then your keyboard stops making music. All right, now we're ready to go to Ableton. I've already launched it on my laptop because that takes a minute, uh, which is why it says close live to enable. I don't need to close it. I tap the button and now I'm connected. And now you can see that my screen and my keyboard are integrated. But that doesn't mean we're ready to make music. The next thing we need to do is go over here and either do control comma for me because I'm on a Windows laptop or go to options preferences. And now we need to talk about this preferences page. Uh, this was the game changer that made it possible for me to make it work. All right, in the audio section, you have to, you, you have three choices here. MME stands for Microsoft Multimedia Experience. That and DirectX are both Microsoft sound drivers that are resident in the operating system. So the good news about those guys is that they will support a large amount of peripherals. And if you get into USB microphones and other keyboards and you want them all to work at the same time, Microsoft MME will support all those peripherals. DirectX is optimized for gaming, but the same idea. Uh, the downside of MME is down here, you'll see 92.9 milliseconds. And I'll show you what that sounds like later on. What you're going to want to select is ACO. ACO stands for Audio Streaming Input Output. That is a sound card driver authored by the Steinberg company. And it connects your application to your peripheral, bypassing the operating system. So it is a very low latency driver that is specifically tuned for certain instruments so it doesn't work with multiples and it doesn't work with every one uh, once you've picked but it is much faster you can see 35 milliseconds uh, when i first selected aco the first time i did not see this phantom 06 option and it took me a few recycles and reboots to work i did download this aco for all which is referenced in the ableton website and and that actually worked but once Phantom showed up for me, I've been selecting that because it's probably more aligned with what the keyboard's going to do. Within the input config, I typed in these zone one, zone two, but I could not get them to work. So the only in audio input I can get is from the mains. I thought it'd be cool if the sub outs could connect on a different channel. I have not gotten that to work. So you can type whatever you want here, but it isn't really gonna matter. On the output config, we get two stereo outputs out of Ableton and those do work. So I have set called one main and one sub. And what I did with that is over here in the outs, you can send the cue out to the sub. And the cue out is like the microphone or the metronome. And I send that to the sub mix. And then I have the sub out go to a little peripheral speaker that I use. And maybe someday playing live, I'll use earbuds for that. So I can hear the metronome uh, without the house hearing that. And then send your main outs to the main. And you can call those whatever you want, but whatever you call them will show up here. With that, your audio setup is complete, and then you go to this one. This is the, uh, the, this is the most important page. All right, in the control surface section, you'll see a lot of options, and Phantom is obviously one of them. Uh, select Phantom, and then for your input, there are three options here. And this is the part that threw me for a while. 
In the Roland video, Ed Diaz picks all three of these in three different rows. That does not work for me. Maybe it's a Phantom O thing, I don't know. But if I pick anything other than DAW control, I start having all kinds of problems. All right, let me show you what they do though. So I'm recommending just pick DAW control for input. When you do, I can move these arrows around and you can see that my screen and my keyboard are in sync. If I turn off the input, then I'm moving on my screen, but I'm not seeing it over here. All right. Interestingly, I can select this automate or activate the track and that's still reflecting on the keyboard. So I can send from the computer to the keyboard, just I can't receive input from the keyboard, which is what you'd expect if you turn off input. So let me put input back. Let me turn off output now. If I do that, now when I select here, I don't see anything. Do the same one so you can see. All right, interestingly, I can go over here. I can do it myself, but I don't get an indication of it over there. And if I turn this back on, then it works again. Okay, so that's why you need input and output on the control surface. I can't demonstrate why you don't want the others, but I was on them for a long time. And it will take, for, answer, uh, for example, channel one, if you have those others selected, the, uh, well, actually the first seven channels can't be used for MIDI music. They can only be used for control signals, and I don't know where it's going. Uh, channel 16 has a whole octave that's used for other purposes in these uh, dock control and MIDI in, or for the first two if you select them in these other rows. Just go with those and you'll be fine. Down here, you don't need a lot of this stuff checked either. All you need is, the most important one is this first track on the Phantom O. This is your main music track, the Phantom 0678. And I'll show you, if I make this, send it to here, now I have music again. And if I turn this off, now I don't have music because this is allowing my keyboard to export or allowing the computer to accept musical signals over the MIDI port. This remote uh, allows you to send control signals over that port, and I'll show you what that means. Ableton Live Lite has this really cool feature where if I click this MIDI button, I can now take any of the controllable buttons on this screen and map them to a signal coming from my keyboard. So if I click on this here, you can see I've already done it once, and I press C, it shows channel one, C3. Now, interestingly, I think this is C4, but Ableton Live thinks it's C3. That's okay. If I click it again and press D, it'll show D. Interestingly, if I press channel two, so it's capturing the channel and the note. Well, if I turn this remote capability off and I try to do that same thing, it won't send a control signal. It's only sending musical signal. That's why you want remote selected here. Okay, and I'll uh, back here and it works again. Now it says I already have used that one. That's fine. Uh, the next one is for DAW control control signals. And I'll give you an example of what that looks like. If I want to use my pads and I hit pad mode, there's a DAW control option, pad mode four. Now, if I select a channel up here, I can get C2. Notice that, and this is an important point, this is channel 16. The pads are always channel 16, but the buttons, including the S1, S2, the wheels and the pedals are all the channel that you have selected. So that, that gets uh, complicated and you'll see that later in the playout in the next video. But if I unselect DAW control remote, and now I select this and try to hit a pad, nothing. But if I reselect it, go over here. All right, so that is why you need remote. The one is for the MIDI notes and the other is for the DAW control surfaces. That is all you need selected. And if you select more, now I haven't experimented with time sync. If, if you're getting into that, then hopefully you already know what you're doing. But I have, originally I had way too much selected and it was really uh, compromising what I was able to do. The outputs are pretty straightforward. You can, if you wanna use the MIDI or the Microsoft out, then you may. And that should, uh, I need to come out of my MIDI mapping mode.
I'm coming out of my keyboard speakers into my line in, so I need to enable that. Here you can hear that latency. Just so you can uh, hear what I'm doing here. Three, four. All right, compared to, if I go with the Phantom output, which has the ACO driver, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty clear right there. Um, so if you're not gonna use that, you can uncheck it. It's not hurting anything, but there you go. So that is, now we are ready to set up, uh, let me show you one other thing. So now you, let me show you the channels when I show my input coming here, here's channel one and that lights up. And if I go to channel four, that lights up, all right? If you wanna get complicated, you can unselect this and pick your zones. These are like zone activate. This is how you can do layering uh, on the keyboard. How I can play three channels at once. Well, that's hard to do when you're going through the MIDI driver. What you can do is hold shift and do it. And now I'm exporting channels one, two, and three. Uh, I, I'll get in. That's for another tutorial on another day. Right now, uh, I make sure those are all off and then just use zone select and I'll play one channel at a time. So these are all, this is my input channel. And like any DAW, I can make my output channel different if I chose. So right now I'm coming in through channel one and going out through channel two. And you can see that here where my keys light up for channel one, but my signal lights up for channel two. And if I change my sound over here, even though I'm playing on channel one, I'm using the tone of channel two. Okay. The last thing to set up here is to make this usable at scale, what I want to do is take channels one, two, three, and four, and I'll assign them to their own track. And once I have that, now I can do one and then two over here and start to make my song. All right, to save some time, I've already created a file that does that. So here is channels one through six, and I'm ready to start recording a song. I'm going to do one more thing before I record the song, and that is set up some MIDI controls. I have found that it's difficult to get to these buttons while I'm playing live because they're very small and they have a very small hitbox. But it's easy to get to the pads. So if I pick like channel one here and use the pad, overwrite that one. So I've gone one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this would be more intuitive if I had eight channels, but I'm, I only needed six, so that's all I've made right now. And I'm gonna make this activate button down here at the bottom, my arm recording button, the bottom row. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now if I turn the MIDI off, so if I wanna play channel two, I don't hear anything right now, but I can enable it. And if I want to play channel four, I can enable that. And when I'm ready to record, I can hit this and it will do that. So I'm ready to go. And that is it for how to connect Ableton Live to the Phantom O. In the next tutorial, I'm going to lo load in a song zone by zone and show you how all this comes together and do some fancy looping and show you how you control it while you play live. So I hope this helped you. Please subscribe if it did, and stick around and watch the next video when I play the song. See you then.